Um, thank you. There's one other issue that I'd like to raise with regards to Afro Swedes. Mm. You both mentioned generations. In the United States, we had something known as the one drop rule, mm. where if you have one drop yeah. <coughs> of Afro Swedish or African ancestry, blood in your mm. ancestry, you were considered black. Mm. And um, I noticed that other ethnic groups in the United States, they don't have a problem mm. with identifying with their so-called <coughs> one-drop rule. You mm -hmm. ask the average American mm. about his ancestry, he'll be glad, he'll be glad to tell you that he's Italian-American mm -hmm. or he's Swedish, Swedish, mm -hmm. German, mm -hmm. Huguenot. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but, but some people, especially here in Europe, transfer that to Europe, and and, and I've, I've read and I've attended meetings where uh, some people of African diaspora descent or Afro descent mm -hmm. uh, reject mm. this notion. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. But to my mind, the so-called one-drop rule mm -hmm. gave people an identity. Mm -hmm. It was used wrongly, of course. Mm -hmm. It was used to segregate mm -hmm. and to create laws. Yeah. But mm -hmm. Do you think that there's a useful debate in this? Mm -hmm. um, who can mm -hmm. call himself yeah. or as, who can self-identify as an African? Yeah. Is there anything useful mm -hmm. in the debate? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I can subscribe to what Michael said about you know the usefulness of this terminology Afro Swedes. Mm -hmm. As such, you know, it, it can help us to mobilize ourselves against the xenophobia and racism that exists in this country has always existed. It's a good thing, you know, to have the terminology. But at the same time, you know, as I said before, I have my reservations. Mm -hmm. uh, that's because that, you know, some people, as you said, maybe wouldn't like to be associated with the African continent. Mm -hmm. If they are born and bred in here, they don't speak a single African language, they don't have that much cultural heritage from the African continent, and you're just putting this level on them, you are African. If they don't want to identify themselves with that, uh, terminology, they should be allowed to call themselves whatever they want, you know, on an individual level. And uh, the other thing, you know, I don't like with this uh, terminology, afro Swedes, is that it's the only group in Sweden which is called afro Swedes. You don't hear euro Swedes or latino Swedes or asian Swedes. The African continent has about 54 different countries. Uh, you have Somali Swedes, Eritrea Swedes, Ethiopia Swedes. All these varieties are always, you know, uh, put together and we call them afro Swedes. <coughs> of course, it's good, you know, to have one common uh, background, the African continent, but at the same time, you know, we have to emphasize the variety, uh, the hybridity that exists in the African continent. Mm -hmm. So, I would say it helps, you know, for the time being, but uh, I don't see any healthy debates, you know, questioning this. Uh, the terminology is always taken negatively, you know, you are afro Swedes and you have to live with it, you know. There is no any space, you know, for a healthy exchange <coughs> of uh, uh, viewpoints or whatever you call it. Uh, and the other thing is, you know, as you said, you know, this one drop uh, blood in Africa, if you have a black blood, then if, it, if it's one person, you are always a black person. Uh, despite the fact that maybe you are 99% uh, white, white person. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it gives you, you know, sort of uh, uh, a reflection, you know, why do people who have, you know, 50-50 background, black and white, they still are forced to get back to their black roots. They don't go to the white roots, you know. It's because, you know, the white institutions are not welcoming them. It becomes sort of, you know, protection. You, you, you look back to your roots and uh, maybe the African culture or the black culture is more open. It allows you to come into. Uh, even Obama is a uh, 50% uh, black, 50% white. He actually grew up in a white environment. His grandmother, uh, his language is uh, English. There's no any African in him as such, you know, culturally, but he's still called a black man. So I think it, it has to do with this, you know, universal uh, ideology we have, you know, uh, that black man in this hierarchy is not up. So it becomes, you know, that you try to protect yourself, you try to strengthen yourself, and then you strengthen it through your roots. So you go back to your roots and you call yourself Afro Swedes. I can subscribe to it, but we have to de dramatize it and deconstruct it and allow individuals to have their own uh, identities on their own uh, premises and their own conditions. You know, it's not something you impose on people, people have to be able to grow on their own.
Wait. Michael? I, <clears throat> I would like to return to, uh, you know, what I said before about Afro, the term Afro-Swedish being a political term. Mm. And, uh, uh, you know, I think that is, that is crucial. And uh, um, now the two most common I think criticisms against and, and this has also been I think the most two most common criticisms in Sweden lately against what has been termed identity politics I do not like that term especially as it is used in Sweden it is very misleading for several reasons um, you know um, perhaps not something to get into now but a criticism against such terms like Afro-Swedish and the fixation, so so-called fixation with identity that has become popular in 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 uh, popular discourse in Sweden these days, uh, that uh, it is it leads to uh, racial thinking, uh, you know, in in a in a very uh, crude and backward biological kind of way uh, ideas of race biology and that there are innate differences and that uh, uh, you know uh, if you belong to a certain race you have certain yeah. determined characteristics and all that that is backward and also that uh, by pushing for say a term like afro-swedish and uh, and an identity as afro-swedish if you will then that is oppressive uh, 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 to the individuals because it's too collectivistic and and, mm. and, 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 and so forth. And as uh, Kwame just mentioned, it, uh, there's a risk of it downplaying individual differences mm. and also playing into ideas of, say, Africa as being a monolithic continent and so forth. Mm. Now, all those criticisms are, I think, totally misconceived. And why I say so is that, I mean, someone like myself, for instance, I am very steeped in the whole anti-essentialistic discourse that has been going on especially since the 1990s I know all the theories all the arguments inside out and uh, you know um, I I know all of, of all the dangers and and, and, and so forth of, of race thinking and, 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 and so on and although I uh, subscribe to uh, uh, the pointing out the dangers and so forth I do not draw the same conclusions and so um, and, 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 and why that is is precisely because of political reasons and that is because we live in a world we live in a society that is racially stratified where people of African descent um, uh, receive the major brunt of discrimination, marginalization, and so forth. We live in a world that is still very much colonially ordered, so to speak, right? Where the African continent is the poorest, the African continent remains the most marginalized, where the legacies of colonialism are very much still alive, and where the racial hierarchy is is pretty much the same everywhere in the West and everywhere in, um, you know, um, former European settler colonies, mm -hmm. such as in Latin America and so forth. Now, in order to deal with that, in order to situate oneself in that situation, to be clear-minded about it and to be able to confront it and challenge it, you know? A term like Afro-Swedish and also terms like people of African descent 
terms like black are useful and I think crucial, critical. That is not to downplay differences at all. It is not to say that we should encourage some kind of group oppression and the demand of everyone that they have to identify in a certain way and so forth. We, of course, should be open to the differences that do exist and acknowledge them and so on and so forth. But at the same time, we need to be conscious and we need to find a way to move the situation forward.